Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is the end of what would have been my 75th election campaign. And since I did participate in the election campaign, but in a novel way, unregistered, attempting to get a dream team of my choices to sweep in who would then let me fix the things that are wrong with my world, I didn't need to get registered and sign up, do books, nothing. I just got to participate, push my political weight around, get interviews I never expected by the media for not running, have political impact in a different way. So this looked like it was going to be a typical election. Number 75, I'd register, run in Brant riding, probably get excluded from three or four debates, end up fighting with the media, maybe going to court, just to stand and get my 100 votes, maybe less because everybody still thinks that I'm charged with the uttering threats and causing a disturbance at the Pauline Johnson School during the last municipal election. Just go see John Termel arrested on the YouTube. So maybe I wouldn't have even gotten 100 votes. So, But instead, here I am at the last minute, last two, three days. I'm about to go out on the weekend and get my signatures. I've got 30 already from a concert at an old folks home with Amber Lee. And uh, I had a buddy out there trying to get some signatures, but he didn't do very well. And I was going to do the weekend getting my last 80 or 90 signatures, which would normally take me three, four hours. But on the last day, wham, I got slammed with an incredible cold. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, no, am I going to go out there and, you know, pass this cold along to all these people I'm going to be signing up who are going to give me the right to speak my piece and be a candidate? And I'm just thinking, oh, what am I going to do? What would it be like if I didn't run? And then I went, wow, there was a guy I met at an anti-poverty meeting on the previous month named Leslie Borey, who'd been talking about getting the Bank of Canada to lend money interest free. I said, oh my God, I got somebody in my riding I can vote for. Also, during the last municipal election, Martin Sitko was a candidate who endorsed the bus bucks. So I had to pick between the two. I picked Leslie because he talked about fixing the Bank of Canada and Martin never brought up anything to do with money once. So I had to vote, put Leslie on the dream, on the dream team. But I didn't have to run. And that gave me a chance to say, wow. If I can now find people out there whom I've known in the past have endorsed lets or interest-free banking, I could add other people and form a dream team and pull an Eberhart move. Because back in 1935, Bible Bill Eberhart said, hey, here's my team of social credit candidates, and if you sweep them in, we'll have a by-election, and I'm in three weeks later. And I said, geez, I can do the same thing. I'll just simply go out there and pick every candidate I can find who supported Let's in the past as his party in some way or other. And my choices were the Green Party, because they originally had it on their program years ago, Let's Green Dollars, but it's been taken off since. But Elizabeth May has good-mouthed it, but never put it back on. So, in the meantime, we've got Christian Heritage who supported, Marxist-Leninist, Libertarians, even Rhinos. So, I went out there and I built up a dream team of people from all those parties, and as a last resort, I stuck on the Greens. That let me have a basic dream team across the country. So anyway, why? Because I figured with the catastrophe coming out of Japan and with the dirty deed the government did by not issuing warnings to Canadians to get out of the radiation, which I think is the greatest crime against Canadians someday they will a judge was ever committed by Harper, in charge at the time, decided we're not going to tell them, we're going to turn off our fallout machines, no more testing of the milk, just let them give it to the kids as if it's still okay, and uh, we're going to get our crop of bent babies and miscarriages within the next year, and uh, it's kind of neat because the Tories won a majority, and Harper's back in, and he's going to be in charge when all the miscarriages and all the birth defects happen. And they're going to be able to point at him as a guy who didn't warn anybody like they were being warned down south in California and then later warned over in Europe. But Harper never warned the people about the deadly radiation that was on the way. Turned off his machines. So, yeah, he's got to live with that now. So the Tories won. And uh, the Liberals got 
pretty well wiped out down to 30 seats. And the uh, the Bloc Québécois, well, they're, what can I say? They're provincial and really they weren't going to last forever. And boom, they got wiped out. And everybody went either to the NDP, loads, maybe 60, 70, and a few extra to the Tories, which gave them a majority. And Jack Layton is now the leader of the opposition. And I would mention that was in 97, there was once an NDP candidate who signed a petition for Canada Let's. So who knows? Maybe it won't be so hard to start pushing through the NDP to get an interest-free Bank of Canada working here. And uh, finally, Elizabeth May won green on the Dream Team. The only one got elected. Isn't that kind of neat? So she also has supported Let's. So we now have Let's that have been officially supported and signed by at least two of those parties in Parliament right now. The Greens and the NDP have both had candidates signed for an interest-free Let's. So maybe we can now work those two into forcing the issue. So that's the interesting. So that's pretty well it. I didn't have to put money down, get signatures, and yet I got to have an enjoyable attempt at pulling off a political coup. Sure, my record in the Guinness Book didn't go from 74 to 75 official races, but I know I participated in this race. I got a lot more press than I ever would have if I joined. They kept coming to say, why aren't you running? And I'm saying, well, I got so many other people out there who now will let me do the lets at the Bank of Canada. I don't need to anymore if I can get a dream team to sweep in. Or even just let me do it and get it done. And of course, as the cancers hit, let's will be the money we're going to need to finance the reproduction of the marijuana. And of course, both the Greens and the NDP leaders have said they're in favor of legalizing marijuana too. So we have a fascinating new angle in Parliament. And uh, who knows what can happen. But, of course, we have Stephen Harper as the guy with the majority. And let's see if he can force his guys to be Neanderthals. Keep going after the marijuana. Drunk drivers killing people? Yeah, shut down the grow ops. You know, I mean, when was the last time you ever heard of someone high hitting somebody? Getting in an accident? Doesn't happen. They know when they're too high and they're more responsible. Alcohol, you don't know when you're too drunk and you're less responsible. So why would the government legalize something that makes you a lunatic while barring something that makes you smart? They want you to be a lunatic getting into trouble because it keeps you so busy with your bobos and your problems, you ain't got the th time to think about how to get rid of your chains. So that was a fun election campaign, the idea of a dream team, and I can still do another dream team. Ontario election coming up. I don't have to run. All I got to do is get 63 guys who want to have an Ontario time bank who are willing to stand up there and say, we'll set up an Ontario time bank for you. And uh, that's it. I don't need to run, do I? And I can try and pull an Eberhardt coup at the provincial level. So, yeah, I'm going to start looking around for people who are going to want to run provincially to set up a let system for the province, time bank, hours, efficient, and let's see what that's going to do with the two friendly parties in power at the parliament now.